here we are in Factorio. Uh, this, you might notice, is not the same place that we were before. I have, in fact, started again, then done a lot of progress, and then now started again again. And uh, I realized that I feel like I've gotten the handle for a lot of the early game things, uh, and am now progressing into the middle stages of the game uh, with uh, AAI, Angel Bob, or and Angels and Bobs all together, as well as a few other, uh, I guess many other mods uh, to support that. Uh, notably, Squeak Through is wonderful. Highly recommend. <coughs> um, but learning all of these has been, um, well, it's been a bit of a journey, but uh, we have finally started to figure it out. So I wanted to uh, walk through some of the earlier builds before I really break my beginner base down and start to rebuild um, in a more sort of modular setup, maybe do a few trains, that sort of thing, upgrade into the mid-game stages. I wanted to talk about some of these uh, early game builds that really helped me get through uh, the beginning stages of the game. Uh, so I'm gonna <coughs> just sort of drive around and I might have to build a couple things that I have deconstructed already, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll walk through the, the early stages of the tech tree. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, first things first, uh, we spawn here and, and I guess I should talk about the settings changes that I made. Uh, because those are quite dramatic. You might notice here uh, the mineral patches are much bigger. If we go to the map, um, there are also many more mineral patches, and crucially, uh, some of these mineral patches have infinite uh, ore in the middle of them, which is very important for the later stages of the game. We need to have that infinite ore circle there in the center so that we can actually um, establish really important resource productions like steel and bronze and lead and not have to worry about those running out. Um, so I didn't have that enabled, and so I ran out of resources at the early stages and had to expand. And unfortunately, due to my settings, I didn't realize how much iron I was going to need to be able to defend my base. I, I had seen other streamers recommend just turning off biters, um, but I, I do still want to have biters in the game. So uh, this time around, I have changed it so that they, they are passive. Uh, they exist, and they start very far away and they do not attack, and they do not expand. So I can still go kill them and get the, the artifacts if I need to, but uh, I, we don't have to worry about them coming and attacking me because of pollution. That is just a non-factor. So that's really nice. That's something that I would highly recommend, as well as turning up the frequency. And uh, I turned them up to max, and honestly, there's maybe too many ore patches. I, I could potentially turn the frequency down, but you definitely want to turn the... Um, the value or the size of the ore patches up to maximum um, for sure. Again, just because this is already a really hard set of mods, so you don't want to have to worry about moving your builds in the early game. That's just such a hassle. Very challenging. Um, <clears throat> okay, so with that in mind, um, we can see we've got these different ore patches here. And you'll notice, first off, this is not just iron and copper and stuff like we're used to seeing. Um, there are, in fact, four uh, ores here. We have... Uh, uh, sapphirite, stearotite, rubite, and then down here we have bobmonium in the bottom right. And each of these can be refined for multiple different ores. Um, and so we have to manage several different uh, buildings that just don't exist in vanilla uh, to even access iron or copper ore in the first place. Uh, and this is, at first, a really severe challenge for a lot of players um, to even begin to process this correctly. So uh, let's hop back up to uh, the build that I have up here, which is what we've upgraded to. And I can explain a little bit about how this uh, AAI and uh, all of this works together. Um, with these different ores, um, what we need to do is funnel them into these ore crushers. Um, and you'll start out with burner ore crushers, which you have to um, usually uh, hand feed them. Um, I guess you, you can feed them main, uh, automatically, but it's kind of a hassle and it'll slow you down. Um, so I just hand fed them and that worked pretty nicely. Um, but eventually you'll get to upgrade to these electric ore crushers, which are a little faster and obviously don't have to be hand fed. That's quite nice. Um, and this we feed into uh, this ore sorting facility. 
And um, each of these has to be set to a recipe. You can see here we've got a bunch of different recipes that we could be doing. Um, so we have to make sure to select the correct recipe so that we're actually crushing and sorting this. Um, and you'll notice it gets crushed into three things. Uh, can crush so this is, uh, stereotype gets crushed into copper, iron, and slag. Slag is a waste product. It can be made into a lot of things um, later in the game, but for now I've just been stashing it. Um, I'm going to be using that very soon. Uh, and then copper and iron, of course, we, we definitely want in abundance. Um, now, uh, this stereotype has mu gives you uh, more copper than iron. I think it's two copper and one iron uh, and every time you do the process. And the, uh, the, oops, the opposite is true. If we go over here, uh, you can see the sapphire ore processing is pretty similar. You'll notice I have a little more of it. We do definitely need more sapphire processing than stereotype processing in the early and mid game because you just used so, so much more iron early on. Um, the copper is going to be really important soon. We're going to be making uh, bronze uh, and after that as well. But in the early game, it's really iron. Uh, iron is what you're really looking for. And you'll notice this um, likewise breaks down into three products, iron, copper, and slag. But this one has uh, a, a greater abundance of iron um, rather than copper. So eventually uh, you'll get to the point where you can kind of route these back and forth into each other so that they share like this, and that is really nice. Um, but that is not what you'll be doing at first. Uh, what I had is uh, everything sort of funneling onto a large belt, which ran pretty far south. And you can actually see this belt still if we go over here. Um, so I crammed a bunch of miners here uh, and just had them feed into ore sorting facilities that were nearby. And then I ran this belt to the south and it was just pumped full of iron. I had a, a chest as well that I would pull iron off the belt into the chest so that I could use it as needed. Uh, so would highly recommend that you set up something to that effect as soon as possible. You really want to get to that stage where you have um, at least some uh, stereotype and sapphire processing. So maybe a couple of burner miners, uh, a burner ore crusher, and a uh, a burner, uh, or I guess uh, actually, you you don't have a burner or sorting facility. Now that I think about it, so you won't have access to the ore sorting facility at first. You'll have to unlock that I think through Red Science. Um, so you want to get that. Until then, though, you have to uh, crush it and feed it directly into furnaces. And uh, if you know anything about this mod set, you're probably groaning. <clears throat> because uh, furnaces, you don't get electric furnaces until blue science. So these, I, again, I had to hand feed these to really do it in any sort of efficient way without worrying about automating it too much. Um, you could automate it, I guess, um, That, but uh, you're going to need some tech for that. So just plan to hand feed for a little while at first, uh, and you'll, you'll need to crush it and then feed that into furnaces and then run that out on a belt to the rest of your base. Uh, so it's only later that you'll unlock the ore sorting facility and that is much better. Um, I should mention also that there is a waste oops, there's a waste product that you really need to be worried about here with this ore crushing process. Oh, <laughs> it's so so compact here I need to clear this out. Um, so you need to worry about this crushed stone. Um, that is something which eventually you'll be able to turn into landfill automatically. That's what I've been doing up here. Um, but when we crush any ore, um, it turns into crushed stone as well as the crushed version of that. So crash, crushed stereotype and crushed stone. And if you fill up on this crushed stone, your machines will stop. So it's, it is not optional to have a plan for this. You have to do something with it. Um, in the early stages of the game, it's awful, but I handcrafted a lot of it into landfill. And I'm talking, I, I handcrafted thousands of crushed stone into landfill. Um, thousands and thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of stone into landfill in the early stages of the game. So this is another thing, is maybe uh, plan on a, a, a few times uh, walking away from your, or grabbing a, a whole inventory full of crushed stone and setting it to craft a landfill and just walking away and having, you know, a sandwich or something, uh, <laughs> some lunch, and come back later 
um, once that crafting process is done and you've gotten rid of all that waste product because um, it is it's it just has to be dealt with somehow. Eventually you'll be able to automate it into landfill, which is a very efficient way to get rid of it. You don't actually get that much landfill from it, but um, it does work nicely, at least. Um, and so that is another thing to worry about here. So you definitely want to handle that also. And we can see here a, a, an early build to get rid of some of this. Um, I would feed the, or I would hand feed the crushed stone into these chests and it would go into these, these were originally burners, um, it would go into these assembly machines, and uh, you can see I still ha even have some burner inserters, which I also would hand feed, and uh, these would take this stone out to go elsewhere in the base to be constructed uh, into other things. Um, <coughs> yes, so uh, I guess while we're up here, we can take a look at this setup here. Um, this is something which you'll eventually want to get to, uh, which are these turbine generators with uh, electric mining drills. Now there is a problem of the buildup of these geodes here, these diamond ores. So you definitely want to have a setup later in your line for coal to remove some of these so that they don't uh, wind up being such a problem later down the line. You can see here that, that works quite nicely. There aren't very many geodes here at all. Um, I do have a backup chest also over here on each of these just to make sure if any happen to get into this line that they do get picked up there. But this has worked quite nicely so far ever since I've installed it. Um, so that's another thing I would highly recommend. Um, but earlier in the game, you know, when you want to get access to that coal, uh, this is something which worked really well. This was, <coughs> I started out with just one, but eventually upgraded to uh, this setup that you have here. And you can see um, this has actually been my, my primary source of coal throughout the game. Uh, I've walked up and just control clicked on the box and gotten tons of coal. So you, these just point into a chest, you hand feed them coal, and then they fill the chest and then they run out. Um, so really handy, would definitely recommend you set some of these up just so you have that passive coal generation. Um, keep them near the machines you're hand feeding too. Um, so I had everything being hand fed um, right there and right over here uh, near these uh, coal machines so I didn't have to walk very far. Uh, it's another thing is you really want to reduce your walking time. Uh, likewise, we've got a, a basic setup here to feed into some furnaces. You put a couple of chests um, with some inserters and then furnaces all pulling into a single chest. We can get lots and lots of stone bricks, which is great. Uh, so this is something you really want to set up early on. It's nice and cheap. You do, again, have to hand feed it, but if you put it right by the coal, it doesn't take too long to hand feed um, and it's not too tough to maintain. Um, all right, so... Um, with those early game builds in mind, let's head down to the red science build that I did. We're just going to drive past some of this uh, and talk about it later. Uh, this is something which has worked wonderfully. So I really want to discuss this a bit. Um, what I have here is just a copper line and an iron line. You can see I originally ran them side by side, but now they're coming from um, a bit further apart. <coughs> and. Uh, this is a, a relatively complicated setup, but essentially what this does is it produces um, red and green science at reasonable rate uh, in a relatively compact way, uh, and it didn't cost very much. I built this very early on and have left it intact and just replaced everything with the electric versions, um, and it's been working even more efficiently since then. So um, it's been really nice to have this. I uh, definitely recommend that you try doing something like this, uh, so we can discuss here what's going on. <coughs> We've got uh, off the main iron line, pulling some uh, iron rods, or pulling some plates off to make iron rods and shove them in a chest here. Uh, this is important because we need to make these inserters uh, so that we can make green science. Um, and these inserters also require engines, so we have a little setup over here to pull plates off to make gears and likewise to pull plates off to make these engines which require gears and plates. So very iron hungry process on this main iron line. It doesn't leave a whole lot of iron left but there has been enough uh, to be able to feed both of these um, and set up another engine production line. Um, it does, uh, with the burners it will tend to back up because they're a lot slower. Um, with just a full slow line. Um, but now you can see um, these are running a bit faster, so we're actually using most of this iron. But it still has quite a good backup here. 
And we need this other thing of engines to make these belts, which are also, again, crucial for yellow science, or sorry, for, uh, for green science. <coughs> uh, and the idea is that you can route the, uh, the yellow inserters onto the belt with the, uh, the belts, the slow belts. And uh, that makes it very convenient to feed in for your green science, which <coughs> with this mod pack requires those two ingredients specifically. Oh, uh, let's, let's pick out some science. Um, so another thing that you'll notice here is this tech tree is absolutely massive. I mean, it, it, I'm just gonna scroll through it just, just to emphasize how big this is, how many different resources there are and how much there is to research. And you can see here, um, this green stuff is what we have so far. So <clears throat> really quite a lot of science, um, really quite a lot of things to research. And we've made a, a decent chunk of progress, but there is a lot of stuff left. So at this point, I'm really just trying to power through all of the red and green science things. I haven't even begun to make any blue science yet because I need to debuild the base and rebuild it in a more efficient way to be able to really produce any of these at scale. Uh, hence, you know, wanting to make this uh, before I do that. Uh, I'll also record some of that uh, re rebuilding process and discuss too. Um, so I've mostly just been picking things that I am able to research. I'm noticing that I'm missing some kind of, I think this is plant science, alien plant life sample. I don't know how to get that. So I'll have to figure that out. This is another thing which I have not really messed around with, but I am intrigued. So I'm just going to pick um, these and just research them uh, until they are done. <coughs> so, um, where was I? Right. So uh, we feed the we feed the belts and the inserters onto the same belt to feed in for green science. And this is pretty much entirely iron that is used to make this because these require engines and plates. And remember, engines require plates and gears, which gears are made of iron. So this whole process is just iron, um, except for these small electric motors. Uh, the small electric motors do require, in addition to a bunch of iron, they require iron plates and iron gears, uh, they also require copper wires, or sorry, ca copper cables. Um, but I've been able to easily supply that the needed copper cables for all of this science production, as you can see, it's quite backed up, um, with just one assembler pulling off of the copper line to make copper wires, putting it in a chest, and then um, shoving that over here. And you can see there's actually a, a, a substantial backup of copper cabling here. Um, yeah, not quite full, but quite a lot of it. So that is a really great way to build out your green science. Um, super easy. You really just need an iron line and a little bit of copper, but you do need a lot of iron to make that work. Um, but it's it's pretty much automatic. You do have, again, early on, you're going to be hand-loading co uh, coal, but um, <clears throat> especially if you have that automatic coal setup, you can just sort of run back and forth with inventories full of coal and fill everything up every you know hour or two, uh, and it will run from there pretty nicely. Uh, especially the inserters hardly ever have to be refilled uh, because they just don't use as much as the uh, burner assemblers do. Not nearly as much energy. Um, now, the red science, on the other hand, does require a, quite a bit of copper. So this is where most of your copper is going to be going, and you're, um, you're going to need a lot of copper at first. Um, it also requires gears, but you can see here we have this secondary gear setup, which is just dedicated to giving... Um, the engines and the science, the gears that we need. And that's that's worked quite nicely with uh, four of each. You can see here, um, this is actually <laughs> quite a bit too much red science uh, compared to our green science production. This is another thing that we're gonna fix. We're gonna get all these ratios right and just produce huge amounts of every type of science. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's see here. So uh, this is something which is highly recommended and is easily rec replicatable with the burners um, as long as you hand feed this. Again, we're definitely going to debuild this and do uh, like an entire dedicated red science plant and an entire dedicated green science plant. Um, they'll be built using essentially the same fundamental ideas, uh, but it'll look a lot prettier and 
be scalable um, and probably accessible by train, ideally. Uh, although we may even have to do another debuild really to get our rail system going. Because, well, um, I, as a, a wise, as a wise boy once said, I like trains, um, and we're gonna need we're gonna need some space for that. So, uh, regardless, let's see here. So that is a crucial build to get done early on. This is going to vault you through a lot of the early game science once you get this produced. Again, it's going to take a little while to get all these resources. You need quite a bit of copper, you need quite a bit of stone, and you need quite a bit of iron just to make the things. And again, you need coal to run it all. Um, so you'll have to go through the uh, process of crushing uh, ores and feeding them into furnaces first before you can make any of this happen. Um, also, I should mention that before you get the ore crushers, you are able to crush uh, stearotite and sapphirite by hand uh, and feed them into furnaces by hand as well. Uh, so you don't have to use belts or anything to do that. You can crush them and feed them into furnaces manually. It took me a long time to figure out that you're able to crush it by hand. It gives you terrible ratios and it takes a long time, but you can um, just simply mine this um, like so and then uh, go over to resource processing and stereotype crushing by hand and you'll get this crushed stereotype and stone just like you would get if you put it in a crusher and you can hand feed that into a furnace or something if you need to um, so definitely recommend uh, doing that also in the early game it took me way too long to figure that out so I uh, want to point that out too um, okay so um, we have reach a point where I think the early phases of the game uh, you're pretty much just sitting and waiting through while your science researches. And so at this point you need to think about um, getting your ore sorting facilities online. Uh, and so you're probably going to need to start doing some metallurgy. Uh, you're going to want to get steel going, you're going to want to get lead going, and you're going to want to get tin going. Um, so uh, I am going to take a quick break and then uh, we will discuss how what we're looking at works. Let's see here. So um, what we're looking at here, well there's a few things. First off, I, I mentioned before we've got uh, some ore crushing happening, which we can then feed into this ore sorting facility. Um, this rubite, you can't crush it by hand, and the same is true for the bobmonium as well. Uh, so, and you're going to need to crush both of them, so you have to get these ore sorting facilities online. Um, this may be, uh, in fact, I, I set this up again with burners, so before we got to the electric stage of things. And uh, like the other ore sorting facilities, this has three outputs. We're going to get slag, uh, uh, lead, and nickel. Um, nickel you actually can't process for quite some time. It's going to take a while. Uh, you can see here I've stored up a lot of it while I've been waiting. I, I'm able to process it, but I haven't quite started yet. Again, want to debuild and rebuild. Um, and quite a lot of slag. Again, you'll be able to process that into some good stuff later, so it's good to hang on to that. Um, and then this lead ore here, which uh, we can take over to this chest just across the way is how I ran it. And, um, well, I guess that's actually full at the moment, so um, I see. Well, we have quite a lot of lead on hand, um, but I would normally hand feed that chest um, until I got this automated. Um, we just fed it automatically. It's quite nice. And what we need to do here is take this crushed ore, um, you can, or sorry, this uh, this lead ore, which has been sorted, um, and feed it into this blast furnace. Um, and the thing about lead is that it requires a new resource. Uh, it requires oxygen. Um, and fortunately, oxygen is easy to produce. You need to make these air filters, and they can just grab it out of the air. Um, again, you're going to have to do some science before you can make this happen, um, but you connect it to a chemical plant, and you get uh, oxygen and nitrogen. Now, at the moment, um, I'm just burning off the nitrogen. Um, I'm sure that there are uses for it at some point. I probably should be shoving it into a tank, but I have not been. Um, and then... Uh, here you get uh, sulfur dioxide gas, which uh, in hindsight I now know is really important. And I'm sad that I haven't been storing this sulfur dioxide gas. So I recommend you just set up like gigantic tanks 
and keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger tanks to store this until you can process it into sulfur. Because sulfur is actually a key resource that is going to um, uh, restrict a lot of your process. That's going to be a bottleneck. Uh, so this is, <laughs> this is quite sad. Um, but you definitely want to store this, and I'm going to certainly be storing this when I do my larger lead build. Um, regardless, it will produce uh, lead ingots from this. You get these lead ingots, and those you need to use an inserter to shove into an induction furnace, which will melt it. Um, you, uh, These will go pretty fast and melt it into a molten version of it, which you shove into a casting machine. Uh, you have to use piping, and be careful about the way that these arrows point on the casting machines. Um, you can see it's very easy to accidentally disconnect uh, just by rotating them the wrong direction, so make sure they're pointing in where you have the pipes. And then, of course, pull out onto a belt or something. You can see I have a buffer chest here. Uh, always a good call, and then run that off to where you want it to go. Um, so this stage, fortunately, the, uh, the only waste products are gases, and those can be burned off or stored. Um, which is not too bad. Um, uh, then over here, this is another good thing to set up, would be your iron. Um, it, I use just a, an, an auxiliary uh, sapphirite mine to make like a dedicated sapphirite ore sorting facility, just to give me a little trickle of iron um, and copper. And I would commonly just hand feed the copper into this chest like so, uh, and hand feed the slag into a, a buffer chest, uh, which now is a silo that you can see is quite full of slag um, that we will be happy to process really soon. And uh, you will, of course, have to process this copper. So you can see here we have an induction smelter making copper plates, um, although a little bit of extra copper is always welcome. Um, and this iron you want to put into a blast furnace to make iron ingots and then put that into another blast furnace with oxygen to turn that into steel ingots. Again, this is a technology you have to up unlock. You can see here I've been burning off this nitrogen. Um, this does not produce a gas byproduct though, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. And then, uh, like the other ingots, we need to melt that in an induction furnace and turn it into plates in a casting machine to make much use out of it. Uh, you can see here I have a moderate amount of steel stored up from this. I've used quite a lot of it lately, um, so it probably would have been somewhere down here rather than uh, where it is now, but even so, uh, pretty handy. You know, you want to have this, get that set up pretty early on. Um, it, it takes quite a lot of resources, and um, these blast furnaces do require coal, so you can see here I have a just a very simple setup where I shoved a bunch of coal in a chest and, <laughs> and put it next to it. That's worked quite nicely. Um, I haven't had to refill those very often. I have had to refill them a couple times, so try to keep an eye on that if you do it that way. Otherwise, you got to run a belt, um, which is possible. You can do that, but you'd have to incorporate that into the build somewhere, maybe running it above in this blank space here. Um, just above our blast furnaces, you could easily fit a belt in there. Um, okay, uh, so that would be... A good example of the metallurgy that you would want to do with your uh, rubite and your sapphirite. You also want to be doing some metallurgy with your bobmonium. Um, you can see here I have quite an extensive bobmonium setup. This is because we need just lots and lots and lots of nickel, uh, it turns out. Um, I haven't expanded this yet, but I've left a lot of room to expand it, because I expect to need to. Um, but you can see I have a very similar setup here. This is sort of a bigger version, very similar to what we have with our uh, copper and iron setup up here, but a bit larger, room for more expansion. Um, let's see here. So this is actually the build that I used to blueprint those up there. Um, and again, it's very similar to those, so we've already talked through that. I don't want to belabor that. Um, and the bobmonium, what happens here when you crush it? Uh, you get stone and crushed bobmonium, like before, and when you sort it, you get three products. Um, two of them are new. Uh, you get tin ore, and uh, you get silicon ore. Now, the tin ore 
Like I said, it's easy to process, you just do it like we did before, but the silicon ore is actually very hard to process, and you're just going to want to shove it in storage for now. You want this silicon ore. Do not trash it. Um, you know, I, you definitely want to be shoving this in boxes. Uh, fortunately, it comes pretty slowly at the early stages of the game, so a few large chests will be more than enough to store it. Um, we can see here I've been letting this run. This has a practically full warehouse of tin down there, and I've only pre I've only half filled uh, these silos. So uh, really, uh, it's an important resource you want to store, it, and it doesn't come that fast. Um, something else that doesn't come fast out of this, unfortunately, is the tin ore. Um, it is not fast production at all. You're going to be really starved for uh, tin in the early stages of the game. Um, it has been quite a relief to have too much tin only very recently, um, once I upgraded my Bobmonium production a little bit. Uh, so crush that Bobmonium with your uh, crushers, shove it into ore sorting facilities, and stash the silicon, melt the uh, tin into ingots and plates just like before, and you'll want to shove that um, into a variety of builds here. We can see um, there is solder here, which requires um, lead and tin plates to be put together. We do solder mixture and then cook it. Uh, this is a crucial build. Uh, solder is used in all of your electronics. This is, again, much too small <laughs> for uh, what I plan to build. We're going to rebuild that. Likewise, you also need to be mixing your tin plates with uh, copper cables to make your tinned copper wire. Uh, this is very, very important because you use this to make your uh, electronic components. So if you want to get into any serious kind of automation and high-level machinery, you want to make these red circuits here, uh, you're going to need lots and lots of tin um, and lots of lead. So that prevents, or that presents a, a pretty severe challenge uh, in the early stages of the game. You're going to be very uh, bottlenecked on lead production. Um, so that's another reason to set up lots and lots of silicon production so it doesn't stop your tin. Um, likewise, if you, you'll have lots and lots of crushed stone. As you can see, I've got a, a setup here, a pretty basic setup just to cr take the stone, craft it into uh, regular stone and then craft that into landfill. And, you know, it's it's not very fast, but it gets rid of all of the crushed stone, and we absolutely have to process it. So it's very important to set something like this up. Um, I guess in hindsight, it looks like these two aren't really operating, so you probably just need four uh, to fully process it. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like they have anything, maybe just five, uh, but yeah. Um, Another setup here that you really want to get going is a doubled line of uh, stone and coal so that you can make stone bricks because you're going to need mountains of them. Uh, honestly, what I need to do, I'm going to do this right now just so that this is passively accumulating while we talk, uh, is to make a, a big warehouse of them or something. So we're going to go to... Uh, Angel's Logistics here, and um, I guess, let's see, oh, I don't have something to make this silo. Oh, ha, I need stone bricks, how ironic. Um, yeah, grab some of these, and make a silo. <coughs> so yeah, while this is, while we're discussing, I will be stashing up some of these stone bricks. I should have done this a long time ago, because stone bricks are very important. Um, yeah. Great stone brick production. Uh, but you'll notice that I've got some other stuff coming over here. Uh, we make these stone bricks into our stone tablets, and we combine those stone tablets with wood. And uh, let me tell you, I was shocked how hard it is to get wood onto a belt like this. Uh, it is not simple uh, in this mod set, but we definitely need to do it. We need to combine these stone tablets with wood on a line and feed that into at least one assembling machine to make these basic insulating boards. Um, this was a, a, a surprising challenge, um, but uh, once you manage to do that, uh, you'll be able to feed that into assembling machines to make uh, basic circuit boards with copper wire, and then feed that in with solder, I mentioned that before, to make these assembling machines here. And you'll need this to make all sorts of stuff. 
um, as you know, I'm sure from playing Factorio, red circuits are always important. Um, so you can see here the beginning of my uh, wood build, and this is something which definitely needs to be discussed. Um, what we have here, these are greenhouses, um, and you unlock these later on. There's an especially important object, the seed extractor. So you're going to need water, as well as these greenhouses and a seed extractor. Uh, and what you do is you get wood and shove it into this seed extractor, and it makes seedlings. You can see it operating here. Um, and it makes way more seedling, it makes several seedlings per wood uh, that you shove into it. And these seedlings then you put into your, um, it's a bit odd that that's not flowing. Um, oh, I see. These seedlings you put into your greenhouses with water, and it eventually makes seedlings. Um, uh, or sorry, it makes trees out of seedlings. Uh, these trees we feed into uh, this system over here, and you can see that they get turned into wood, but they require this uh, saw blade. So you'll have to set up a loop like this, where uh, the blades are fed onto one side, and then onto the other side, the out, the extra blades come out the, the other side. So 90% of the time, uh, it will save the blade and spit it out over here, and it, you'll have to refill the blade each time, um, uh, regardless of whether the blade comes back that 90% of the time. And if you set it up just like this, it will preferentially pull off of the outside of the belt, and only allow this machine here to craft uh, when uh, one has been taken off the inside belt, which doesn't happen terribly often. You can see there's quite a lot of iron here. I might as well just shove a bunch more in. Um, and you can see here, it pulls those off. And um, what we needed to really automate this, this is a, a crucial item that uh, is very hard to get your hands on, is the filter inserter. You can see here, it's so tough because you need these basic electronic boards. Um, which I mentioned before are a major challenge to get. But once you get these, you can automate this system. Um, until then, you're just going to have to hand feed some stuff. Um, it is going to be a hassle. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll hand feed things um, and pull the saw blades out occasionally. Larger chests will help. Um, but you'll have to keep a constant flow of saw blades going in to process the trees and then occasionally pull the saw blades out manually until you get these... Uh, these here. As you can see, I have blacklisted saw blades on this line, and I have whitelisted uh, saw blades here and here to pull them that way. Blacklisted them here as well, uh, so that only wood comes out this side and gets loaded into our silo, which is now full of wood. Fantastic. Um, so this <laughs> it was an adventure, figuring this out and actually getting this set up. As you can see here, we aren't even stacked on, um, on trees. We aren't really stacked up uh, because of how much wood we're using, um, which is, I mean, it seems like practically none. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where this wood is getting used, but, um, oh, it's going into uh, these chests. These chests aren't quite full yet. Um, and you can see we're still not s stacked up on sapping. So it took a very long time to stash up this quantity of wood. I don't don't want to put you under any illusions that it is particularly quick, even with this many greenhouses. Um, although I could definitely support more uh, were I to expand it. So uh, another thing that you're definitely going to need to get your hands on to make all of this happen uh, is this right here, uh, this clay brick. Uh, you need lots of clay bricks. They're very hard to make. Uh, it requires a whole sub-processing setup where you're doing this thing called washing, um, which is a new addition. Uh, and am I not feeding water into this? I haven't been feeding water into this. Uh, let me fix this real quick. Um, anyway, uh, you're doing this thing called washing where you are processing water that is initially quite muddy that you pull up with these seafloor pumps. It's called uh, viscous mud water and you're processing this into various uh, thicknesses and muddinesses of water. So at first we process it into heavy mud water, which we shove into another set of washing plants to give ourselves uh, concentrated mud water, we shove it into another set of washing plants, and that gives us light mud water. 
yet again. Uh, light, uh, we get thin mud water, and then finally, uh, we get saline water. Um, and as a byproduct of all of this, we get mud. Lots and lots and lots of mud. Uh, this you're going to have to pull out, otherwise your machines will stop. I recommend you just turn it into landfill. Again, this is not fast. Um, it runs very slowly. To, it's, it's been running for a long time, and you can see we've only made this much landfill. But um, it does use the mud, which is really the primary concern here. Um, I, you don't really have to worry if you build it like this about these filling up. Um, and it doesn't really matter if this first one fills up. Um, but this, you do want to make sure your saline tanks don't fill. Uh, because saline water is crucial. You need tons of saline water, so this is another thing that you should just keep expanding and make sure that you're always producing it, um, because your machines will stop and you don't want to waste it. Save every drop of this saline water, just like you should save every drop of that sulfur dioxide gas that I was wasting um, up until, well, uh, after this. Um, so make lots and lots of saline water, uh, make lots and lots of mud, turn that into landfill, uh, and uh, likewise, you need to, I think it is uh, with the concentrated and the th light mud water, yeah, the light mud water and the thin mud water, actually. Uh, you need to make some extra of those and pipe them up somewhere else, because there are two other products you need. Um, you'll need to turn the thin mud water into this washed sand, uh, and you need to turn the light mud water into limestone. Um, this is, these are both mandatory so that you can make uh, these bricks here. Uh, you make the lime. Uh, let's see, you take the, uh, yeah, you take the limestone and you cook it in a blast furnace. And that gives you uh, carbon dioxide and lime. Uh, you can eventually make this carbon dioxide into fuel. I've just been burning it, as you can see again. Um, this lime you pull out and feed that into uh, another line here. You're going to be able to make this into cement eventually, but I actually haven't been able to start this process. We'll, we'll get that cement going soon. Um, you need the washed sand uh, combined with clay. Oh, whoops. How did I break this? Uh, this should be getting lime. Yeah, you need lime in here too. Um, I managed to break this somehow. So these should be getting fed sand and lime. And they're getting fed sand, but not lime. Uh, you know what we can do here? So we'll, we'll problem solve this. What I want to do... Uh, oh, that's because the lime isn't being produced. There's an item ingredient shortage. There's no water here. Um, well, I guess first, let's go ahead and fill this chest up. Seems like our belts are actually working, but we ran out. And I'll shove some of this in here manually. Uh, what we need is to put water into this. This is a, it's a complex production line, and we need water input here, and it looks like our water is disconnected. So, uh, this is, where is our nearest water line? There's some. Uh, let's put a pump in here. Just to make sure it's running fast. Okay. up here like so and just shove some water in there okay there we go all right so now we've got our production line back on that's good um, anyhow yes this is very important because you need to be making um, this brick you need to make uh, clay which oh yeah requires concentrated mud water as well uh, so just like you need the light mud water and the thin mud water you need concentrated mud water pumped up too to make into clay which you combine with the washed sand and uh, cooked lime to get unburnt clay bricks. And then finally, 
feed those unburnt clay bricks into furnaces to get yourselves clay bricks. Um, and these clay bricks are used in a, a lot of angel machines, so you're going to need them all the time. Um, this is not enough. Uh, I need more. Again, <laughs> we're going to upscale all of this. I'm going to debuild and rebuild uh, in a big way. For sure, we're going to just make this whole area dedicated to water and water storage instead of having all of our processing on site. Maybe put our processing somewhere up to the north. Um, this build down here, I actually kind of like. Uh, we might leave this here uh, just because it is scalable and in a good spot at the very least. Yeah, let's see here. So I think that about covers everything. And uh, let's see here. Let me double check what else there might be to mention here in these early game builds before we start to tear things down and rebuild. Also, dude, where's my car? Um, oh, it's right there. Okay, so, um, I believe that is everything here that, oops, <laughs> that's a rock. That's another rock. Need to, uh, <laughs> need to get rid of those. Um, wait, that's everything. Let me double check. See if there's anything I haven't discussed yet as far as the builds go. I'm not really in mid stages. Um, yeah, I should mention that, uh, whoops, it was a big step for me to get the crushed stone automated. Um, <laughs> I keep crashing stuff. To get all the crushed stone automated uh, like this and feeding into things elsewhere in the plant. Uh, I had a lot of problems with my machines running out of coal and a lot of problems with my machines running out of stone. So the sooner that you can get to the stage where you stop hand feeding, it is worth the extra 20 minutes it's going to take to tear everything up and, and rebuild elsewhere. You're going to need to get a lot of belts first, but that setup I showed you with the science will have a surplus of belts. Um, a pretty big surplus of belts too. So you'll be able to get the belts that you need fairly quickly. Um, so it's absolutely worth debuilding everything and rebuilding in a way that automates the coal insertion and automates pulling out the stone and processing the stone into other stuff uh, as, as soon as you can. Basically, as soon as you unlock a landfill, I would suggest you, you set out and do that and get that automated into being produced into landfill. Um, especially if you have super high frequency ore patches that are really large like I do. Um, they're only going to get larger as I go out. Um, and so you're going to need lots of landfill to fill in water spaces so that you have room to build that isn't covered in ores that you want to harvest. Um, another thing that I would mention here is planning is really good. Uh, you can see I've done a little bit of planning and a little bit of noting for what's where right now. I'm going to move some of these things, but we're definitely building steel, lead, and bronze. Um, near these infinite patches. I'm going to put the uh, infinite uh, sapphirite to use making steel, infinite rubite making lead, and infinite bobmonium making bronze because this is near stearotite as well. So this is a perfect location to be making bronze. You want to look for something like this where you've got bobmonium and stearotite together with these infinite patches. Uh, something that's important to note here is that these infinite patches uh, don't exist in your starting patches. There aren't any. You have to go away from your starting base to find them. Um, and there's also tons of resources I haven't even begun to harvest yet. Uh, there is this stuff called thermal water. Uh, there's oil somewhere, crotonum I haven't messed around with. There's also natural gas and a whole bunch of other things. So there's so, so much more uh, to explore here with this mod before we actually manage to finish it up. I also am a pretty good ways into a playthrough of space exploration uh, that I've been playing. Um, that I've made quite some progress with. I decided to learn ab about that mod set too. Um, so if you'd like to, to see a similar video for my, my base in space exploration and my usage, I use, make heavy usage of Factorissimo, which is something I'd like to do as well once we have the resources here. Um, so if you'd like to see something like that, uh, definitely you know hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments um, if you would uh, like to see that. I'd be, I'd be happy to uh, show, you, show you that. Um, yeah, and uh, I guess if you're still here, thank you, thank you for watching, and you know I appreciate you hanging out and uh, checking out the new base before we tear it down. Um, I will definitely do be doing a similar recording for 
when I bring things back up online. Uh, but I, for now, uh, I need to go uh, do some work. I have to, I have to do some work uh, because I live in a society and that is what is required of me. So uh, I hope that you have a wonderful day uh, and remember that you are a wonderful person. I'll see you next time.